Yeah, I'm helping you out. Alright, good. I just didn't want to do this in the lane. Um, hi everyone, we did a lame lab. Sorry. Um, so basically what we want to do is find the uh, relationship between the grit of sandpaper, but we change that to the particle size, like if the size of a little tiny sand, I guess, on the sandpaper. This is specific to aluminum oxide sandpaper, right. which is just little crystals of aluminum oxide, like all of them pasted down on regular cardboard style paper. This is tradi the traditional sandpaper you use in for like wood projects and some other materials, but it's just when you go to the hardware store and buy sandpaper, this is what you need. Okay, so we hypothesized that as the particles got bigger, which means the grit is getting lower, yeah. right, then the coefficient of static friction will increase. Okay, so basically all we used was the equation for static friction, and there's like my version of it and then what it actually means. And so when I think of the equation of static friction, I think of mu f by force of static over the, up for thickness over the Noether force, and then Luke translated that into what it actually means. And so yeah. Is everyone familiar with static everyone, friction? Everyone follow? Yeah. Good, good, good. That's a concept. Um, here's the diaphragm. Uh, <laughs> 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 Luke, do you want to explain? Yeah. Um, I had a mass <coughs> on uh, a mass with a hook coming out of it, and then I pulled it across a sandpaper with a force sensor, and uh, I would pull, I would gradually increase the, the amount I was pulling until the sandpaper began to, or until the mass began to move across the sandpaper, and then I repeated that several times uh, over the course of a, about 20 seconds or so, in an effort to try and get the maximum amount of, st like the accurate value of the maximum amount of static friction possible. And uh, I had the force sensor off the sandpaper, so I wasn't actually, I was pulling directly perpendicular to it, but it wasn't itself being affected by the sandpaper. And those forces, that just shows all the forces being, uh, the force of gravity and normal force cancel out, obviously. And then, in theory, when you reach the, the point at which uh, static friction becomes kinetic friction, the uh, applied force and the force of friction should be equal. Um, this isn't like raw data. This is something we calculated. We should have probably put a graph of the raw data on it. Yeah, just um, an example. <clears throat> basically, our our graphs of raw data were just like they were just the large increasing. peaks and squiggles, and then they would go down as the as it started to move, and then it would go back up when I stopped it and started applying a smaller force, and then reach a peak again and then stop, and then we would just take yes. the maximum value of that. So just time. Yeah. So it was just like, because this is the point that we were looking at um, when we overcame static friction, and we didn't put it in the PowerPoint for some reason. Um, what we got from this graph, we actually took looking at like an hour to figure out how to actually say it. But basically, as the particle size or diameter of the aluminum oxide guys decreased, the friction got less because as long as we kept the density of the particles in a given area the same. No, wait, am I wrong? wrong? You're wrong. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's what it seems like it would do. If oh, you're thinking right, right, about right. sandpaper, but that, this, this, I don't know, one of those two is wrong. Um, as the diameter of the particles increases, the coefficient of <coughs> static friction seems to decrease. Doesn't make a lot of sense. It seems counterintuitive to the the general hardware logic that oh I use a finer grit for more fine work, but what it really turns out to be is that you get more static friction from the lower grits, but you get more kinetic friction for the amount you're applying to the object when you're using a higher grit. So that way you can be more sensitive with how hard you're pressing on it to get to do the finer work. So the kinetic, this is, this is just a measurement of the, because static friction is always higher than kinetic friction, then this is just a way to measure how, like, the maximum amount of friction that a piece of sandpaper could apply to a particular object, the, the, the maximum amount of frictional force in relation to its grit number. So as the size goes up, 
that amount goes down. Um, oh, I'm going to jump back here because we're not that far yet. I kind of tried to explain this to myself because it seems like if you have a piece of sandpaper that's like really smooth, which means the particles are small, and the particles would be back here on the graph, that doesn't seem right. Because like as sandpaper gets smoother, you'd think the friction is less. Um, I tried to like explain this to myself by saying, I don't really know how I tried to explain it. Sorry, I had something <laughs> I to say here and I forgot it yesterday. Yeah, it's the distance. We were thinking about the distance between the individual particles, which is why the density of the particles comes to be a factor. Uh, to be a factor. If the particles are smaller, that means they can be closer together, which means that if you have a bunch of particles that are really small and they're all really close, the, the closer they are together, the more uniform the surface is. So that means that you'd think there would be less friction. Mm -hmm. But if you have a lot of big, like big particles that are far away, there's a smooth area in between them, and then there's just big jumps when you reach a particle. So it, it's kind of a, a consistency thing. It depends on, we did, this data is basically telling us that the density is probably more important a factor than the actual size of the particles, because there's such a small variance in the size of the particles. I'll go to the source of error side. Another source of error could be the, uh, the, well, the, sh the shape of the little crystals. Since they're crystalline and they're broken off a bigger piece, they're not perfectly modeled by a round thing, so the diameter is not perfect. Um, the other thing would be uh, if it's the, uh, what was the the density of the the particles themselves could be. It's just an average diameter for the particular sheet. So there could be a larger variance in one sheet than another. You could have one sheet that every single particle was, theoretically, you could have one sheet that every single particle was this, the average, the same size, and so the average was the same. Or you could have one sheet where they're really drastically different, so that the consistent, it wouldn't be consistent at all, but then it's still all average to be the same number. Um, we said another source of error could have been the, if Luke had pulled them at an angle, like kind of. If it hadn't been sensor, perfectly, right, not the normal. To the normal force. Um, so the force wouldn't be equally distributed. Like, it wouldn't be solely on the x-axis. There would have been some force going. And the last thing would be, uh, since it's a very small instant where you're overcoming the static friction and transferring to kinetic friction, there's a chance that you might not reach the full effect of static friction because I can only. With my hand, I can only reach such small intervals of increasing my the amount I'm pulling. So, if it was a perfect experiment, the numbers could be slightly bigger. So basically, our conclusion is that friction isn't just based on particle size, and what we realize, especially with that little coefficient and stuff graph, is that the particle density plays a big factor, probably and the regularity of particle size. So if we had more time and more drive to do more work, we probably could have tested more things and got a better understanding of this. But we're lazy and we didn't do it. And it's also really hard to measure the density of particles when they're like barely there. Yeah, Luke suggested I'm counting just counting all of the time. <laughs> 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 she had to do like a microscope and she was like a monster yeah. in the area. Awesome. <laughs> we do not have time for questions. Thank you guys. Yeah. The, the, the units on that graph, they're like micrometers, right? Yeah. I didn't realize that when you were talking, you're like the very Yeah, no, they're not actual meters. Yeah, when I put it in yeah, meters, yeah. it looks super Yeah, weird. you're like the very small range. I'm like, that's like 20 per thing. I'd rather just micrometer.